first SBS seminar series interview for this year. Today we're joined by Dr. Rachel Wiseman, who will later be giving a talk entitled Mr. Truman and the Corruption of the Ideal Standards. Dr. Wiseman is an Addison Wheeler Fellow in the Department of Philosophy at the University of Durham, but also completed her PhD here in York. Thank you for taking some time to talk with us today. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. How do you feel to be back in York? It's nice to be back. Um, so I finished my PhD here nearly four years ago and I love Durham. It's absolutely brilliant, but it's really good to come back um, and meet some of the people that I taught all those years ago yeah. and worked with. Yeah. Nice. Um, your talk this afternoon sounds really fascinating. Could you give us a brief overview of the kind of thing you'll be talking about? Um, so the Mr. Truman in the title is Harry S. Truman, who is the President of the United States who gave the order to drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, a debate that turned up in the 1950s in Oxford when Oxford University decided to offer him an honorary degree and there were some objections to that. And I'm going to use that to talk more broadly about moral philosophy at that period and the kind of legacy of that. Okay. Um, a lot of your work focuses on Elizabeth um, Anscombe, mm -hmm. um, who talks about the need to go back to a more traditional Christian view of ethics. Mm -hmm. um, do you think, therefore, that we can see ethics in a modern light whilst still keeping the concept of integrity intact? Yeah, so one of the things I want to talk about today is um, a, a, a kind of distinction between modern and, and what I'm calling unmodern approaches to ethics. And you're quite right that Elizabeth Anscombe is very much in the unmodern camp. Um, and that kind of makes some people anxious because you think, well, we don't want, you know, what do we do in a secular society? Can we still have a kind of Christian type view of ethics without all the stuff that we might not like about uh, particular views that Catholics might have, for example. Um, so one of the things that I think is really interesting is that um, Elizabeth Anscombe, although she is a Catholic, the kind of conception of ethics that she uses is one that goes right back to Aristotle. So kind of Catholic ethics comes from Aristotle and then goes through Thomas Aquinas and then becomes the, the kind of the moral philosophy of the Catholics. But if you go right back to Aristotle, then obviously you've got a secular version. So what's quite interesting about Elizabeth Anscombe is although she is a Catholic and she has got a Catholic worldview, she grounds that in Aristotle's ethics, which I think is something that we can all appeal to, even if we're not um, religious. So. Very interesting. Um, few, very few women have studied in philosophy. With your focus on Anscombe, are you finding that um, there's more space in the academic world to discuss the writing um, and works of women mm -hmm. um, who are contemporaries of you know, many male philosophers? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm really glad you asked me that. So one of the um, projects that I've started at Durham with a colleague of mine um, is looking at Elizabeth Anscombe and three of her fellow undergraduates at Oxford University. Um, Mary Midgley, Philippa Foote and Iris Murdoch and they all started as undergraduates together and they all went on to flourish as women philosophers um, and what's particularly fascinating about this group of women is they arrived at Oxford during the Second World War when all the men were away and Mary Midgley who's still alive, she lives in Newcastle and I think she's in her late 90s now she says that the reason that they all were able to do well in philosophy was because there weren't any men around and so they were able to get their voices heard. So one of the things that I'm going to talk about as well today is the question of whether or not this view of philosophy that Anscombe defends and which is also defended by Foote and Murdoch and Midgley going slightly different ways is connected to the fact that they were undergraduates when all the men were away but also maybe to the fact that they were, were women. So I think it's really important that um, we read the work of women and that women get a chance to develop as philosophers because um, if everybody who's doing philosophy is a white upper class man, yeah. then you're going to get a very particular world view. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for your answers and look forward to hearing your talk. Thanks very much. Thank you.